This is part three of the video series about um, circuits with only capacitors. We're finding the equivalent capacitance of the circuit, which was the first video. Second video was actually step number four on my list, which was finding the total energy in the capacitor. And this one's going to find the charge on each of the original capacitors and the potential difference across each capacitor. Remember, potential difference is also called the voltage drop or the change in voltage. So I've got it worked down to where I've got a single capacitor. And now I've got to rebuild the circuit working backwards, looking for C and Q, that is the charge and the capacitance, as I work backwards and the voltage across each capacitor. So I've already got the capacitance for each of my capacitors. Now let's start looking at the other stuff. All right, so I know C is equal to Q over V. The capacitance is equal to charge over voltage. And from this last capacitor, I know that it's a 12 microfarad capacitor and 36 volts on the top and zeros on the bottom, so it uses up 36 volts. So now I just solve this for Q once I plug in my numbers. And I get Q to be 432 microcoulombs. Notice, in order to solve for Q, everything's multiplied together, so the micro symbol just pulls right out with the answer of microcoulombs. Now, working backwards, this is why I had you show everything one step at a time, and you got to draw it big on the paper. Because when you're finding the charge and voltage dropped for each of the previous capacitors, that is all the ones we built on the previous steps, you'll always carry a value and calculate the other. In other words, capacitance we already know. You're either going to carry the charge or the voltage, and then you're going to calculate whatever you don't carry. And we're going to use this, this algorithm all the time now. All right, so this 12 microfarad capacitor was made up of the 4, the 2, and the 6, which are all in parallel. And one of the things you had to know early on was that in parallel, the voltage stays the same. So what I'm going to do is I know that the 12 microfarad capacitor drops 36 volts. So I'm going to carry 36 volts because they're in parallel. And that's the reason why. Because they're in parallel by definition, they all use up the same voltage. So carry the voltage, now I'm going to calculate the charge. So the 36 volts, I know the capacitance of each one. So I'm going to use my equation, C is equal to Q over V. Specifically, I'm going to rewrite it as Q is equal to CV and use that to calculate my charge on each one of the, one of the capacitors. So 144 microcoulombs, 72 microcoulombs, and then 216 microcoulombs. Now, Got to work back up to the top circuit, the original circuit. That's the values I want, is to find the charge and the voltage used up by each one of those capacitors. So when working backwards, I know that the 6 microfarad came from the 24 and the 8, which are in series. And in series, the charge stays the same for all the capacitors. So I'm going to carry or copy the charge used by the 6 microfarad capacitor up to the 8 and the 24. Remember, you're going to copy or carry something up to the capacitors and then calculate the other. So 216 is what I'm carrying up there. 24 microfarads, it has 216 microcoulombs on it. 8 microfarads has 216 microcoulombs. And then we use the same formula, C is equal to Q over V, to do my calculations. So now I'm going to calculate for the voltage using that formula. So I rearranged it for voltage. Got 216 microcoulombs divided by 24 microfarads, giving 9 volts across the top capacitor. And if it comes in at 36 and drops 9, I pretty much know the other answer is going to be 27, because it's got to go down to 0. But I'm going to do the math anyways to check to make sure that I'm right. So I did the math, I get 27 volts. So far, so good. All right, one cool thing about this is microcoulombs divided by microfarads, the micros go away this time. Same thing on the bottom, microcoulombs, microfarads, they go away. Now, as for the other two, you saw what happened. Um, I don't need to do any more calculations with the 4 and the 2, because I already found those out. So all I did was just copy the values up to the top capacitor. So at this point, I know the voltage dropped by each one of the capacitors, and I know the charge that's residing on each of the plates of the capacitors of the original circuit. 